Hey everyone, it's me, Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. I'm so excited that you've joined us for the Dragonfly Delight. This is a Zen Tangle class for the San Rafael Public Library. Let's go ahead and talk about the things that we're going to need for class today. You're going to need to have a graphite pencil, your favorite Tangle pen. I'm going to be working with the Micron PN pen, but you can use your favorite one a white gel pen. I'm going to be working with the Signo and or you could work with the Sakura white as well. I will be tangling on a four and a half by four and a half inch tile. You can see that this is the Genesis tile that you can pick up at the Tangled Yogi shop. It's super smooth and great for working with color pencil. Now if you don't have the tiles, you can go ahead and just make a square on your favorite sketch pad or some super smooth card stock. Uh, that always works out really well or even Bristol paper is one of my favorites as well to tangle on. You want to have paper that's nice and smooth because we're going to be working with color pencil. And by the way, you'll need to have your color pencils. I'm going to be working with Prisma color pencils today. They're my favorite. With that said, let's get started with the Dragonfly Delight. Now many of you know that I like to do a little bit of centering before we get started with our tangling. So let's go ahead and take a comfortable seated position, however that works for you today inside of your body and allow your hands to rest down into your lap. Let your shoulders melt down away from your ears and let your feet touch down onto the floor here. And if you're okay with it, allow your eyes to close for a moment. Taking a moment to scan through the body here as you soften through your facial features, relaxing through the eyebrows, and the jaw, taking a gentle swallow to relax the throat muscles. Once again, allowing the shoulders to melt away from the ears, allowing the arms to soften, chest relaxing, rib cage softening, belly relaxing. Letting go through the hips, the thighs, the knees and the calves, the ankles and the feet, allowing your entire body to be at ease in this moment and turning your attention to your breath, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. in through the nose and out through the mouth. And one more time in through the nose and out through the mouth. So let's go ahead and shape the breath a little bit. Breathing in to the count of four Hold the breath in to the count of four. And exhaling to the count of eight. Breathing in for four. Hold the breath in for four. And exhaling to the count of eight. Last time, in for four, hold for four, and exhaling to the count of eight. Taking a moment to scan through the body here, noticing any places where you still might be holding tension and softening. And letting your breath return to its natural pace here as you begin to wiggle through your fingertips and wiggle through your toes and gently blink your eyes open 
and let's get ready to create. Okay, so let's begin here. Uh, you can see that I've got my handy dandy Zentangle pencil here, and we're going to start the regular old fashioned Zentangle way by putting our dots in our corners here. So you can see that I'm just starting with my dots in the corners. We're going to create a nice border, and I'm going to go ahead and connect the dots here, and you can see that I'm taking my time. Taking your time and noticing if you're holding your breath while you're connecting your dots. And see if you can allow the breath to be nice and fluid here. So there you can see I've got my borders all set up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start to build what we call our string in Zentangle. So I'm going to start by coming into the top where that line is that we just made. And you can see I made a dot right there in the middle. I'm just going to turn my tile and do that in all four lines here. And the reason why we make a string is so that we can divide the space. Sometimes when you're working on a white piece of paper, it can be a bit overwhelming. So this is a way of dividing the space and giving yourself a composition. So you can see that I'm just making it easy for my hands here as I start to connect my dots once again. Taking my time. And you can see that that's given me a little bit of a diamond in there. Now once I have that diamond in there, I'm going to go ahead and divide the space again. So I'm going to come to the middle line, or the middle of each line that I just created. So the last lines that you just made, you're going to make a dot again in the middle. And once again, we're going to start to connect the lines. So you can see that I'm turning my tile, making it easy for my hands here. So there you can see now I've got a really nice square in the center of my piece. We're going to go for it one more time and make one more layer here. So I'm going to come in once again, a dot in the middle of the line. And we're going to go ahead and create that really nice composition. So now you can see I've got a diamond and a square and a diamond and a square. All right, so you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to do mine. And then when we come back, we're going to start to build a little bit into the piece. Okay, so I've picked up my Micron PN pen and I'm going to start to do what we call inking in to the piece or doing a draw over, whatever sounds best for you. So we're going to go over the lines of our string here and start to build. So you can see that I'm just coming in and I'm going to ink in my lines. And I'm really taking my time getting into the groove of it. And you can see that I'm going to turn my tile to make it easy for my hands. And finally coming to the outside edges. And then I'm going to go ahead and ink in my borders as well. Now because my piece has some rounded edges, I'm going to round off my borders too. The 
tile that I'm working on has rounded edges and that's why I did that. I'm just taking my time. Now once I've gotten all the way around, you can see this one didn't get as rounded as I'd hoped, but that's okay. Once we have that, what we're going to do is we're going to start to build inside and give this a little bit of a border here. So what this will look like is, I'm going to come in and do a nice little border on that inside square. And it's a pretty narrow border. Just like so. And then I'm also going to do another border, but this is going to be on the outside edge of the piece here. So what this is going to look like is I'm going to come into where my triangles are and I'm going to go ahead and just give myself a place to land. So as I go through, I'm going to come in. Now watch, when I get close to this triangle, I'm going to lift up and I'm going to come out the other side. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Lift up and come out the other side. Lift up, come out the other side. And last one right here. Super fun, super easy. And look at how pretty that is. Isn't that a fun space to work in? I think we're going to really enjoy this piece. So go ahead, do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. And then when we come back, we're going to start to build inside the center. All right, so inside of this center piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to create what looks like a crescent moon here. So I'm going to come into the corners and I'm just going to start by creating these really soft crescent moon shapes. Now once I have those crescent moon shapes, I'm going to start to work inside of the center of my piece. So in the center, I'm going to come right in and I'm going to do a little circle. And we're going to build off of this circle using the tangle flux. And flux just looks like this for those of you who are new to Zentangle. It's just a teardrop shape. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come right in, right where the piece starts. And I'm going to start by going up, touching the edge, touching the other side, and coming down again. I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to do it again. I'll go ahead and do it again. And one more time. Now once I've got flux all the way in there, I'm going to do what we call an aura or an echo. And what that is, is I'm just going to step down and create a little petal that comes down off of either side that's an echo of the first. And you're going to see me turn my tile and do it on either side. And these are pretty narrow echoes or auras. And then it looks like I've got room to go around again, so I'm going to go ahead and do one more on each one. And it might get a little smushy here and there, and that's just okay. And I think that's all I'm going to get in there. So now I'm going to zoom in on the center here. 
and I'm going to go ahead and puddle in these little triangle-like shapes that are up at the top. You can see them in each of these corners here. Puddling ink just means you're pooling ink in one place and you can see that I'm barely touching the page with my pen. The lighter you go, the more the ink will flow. Now if you have any interstices over here, you can see I've got a little triangle there. I'm going to puddle that in. Puddle this guy in. Got a little one right in here. Little one right there. Just any places where you have any kind of odd white spaces that have poked through. So that you end up with a shape that looks something like that. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back, we're going to start to build outward. Okay. So this next tangle is one of my all-time favorites. This is Betweed, and I, I love Betweed. It's one of those tangles that uh, just makes me happy to do it. But before we start with the tangle Betweed, we're going to add one more border in here. So you're going to see me come in, and I'm going to just put in a nice little dot in each of my corners here. And I'm going to go ahead and add another border. So you're going to see me come in lift up and come out the other side, coming down, lift up, come out the other side, come around, and you can see mine's a little wonky, that's okay. If it was perfect it would look like a computer made it. This is us being creative here. So there you can see we've got that really nice border. So let's talk about Betweed here. So we're going to do Betweed. And we're going to do Betweed in a triangle or yeah, what looks like a triangle. So I'm just going to make a little upside down triangle there. And let's zoom in on it. So once I have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by doing an aura on this line right here. So it will go off center. See how I'm not at the corner, I'm off the corner. And then I'm going to come down in here and I'm going to go off the corner. I'll come down here, off the corner, and over here. So it almost creates like a braid. The tweed has a really nice feel to it. Now once you've got those lines in there, you can come back in and you can add what we call a little bit of weight into those lines and it gives such an interesting feel to Betweed. So that's Betweed. Let's go ahead and start. So I'm going to start right here at the bottom here. So right in, I want to make sure I start in the right place, right? <laughs> So I'm going to start right over here. You can see that I'm right next to this square. I'm not working where the crescent moon is. I'm just outside of where it is. Okay, So I'm going to come in right here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to go off center. So notice how that didn't hit the corner. I'm going to come down and I'm not going to hit the corner. I'm going to go off a little bit. off a little bit, off a little bit, and there you have it. Let's do it again. So we're going to just go to the next little area right here, off the corner, coming down, staying off the corner, coming over, staying off the corner, It's a really pretty tangle, isn't it? I'm going to turn. Here we go again. So not to the corner, but slightly off. I'm going nice and slow, taking my time. Coming over here. Here we go. One and two one and two, one 
and two. I think I can get one more in there. So then when I zoom out, look at how pretty that is. Isn't that lovely? So remember how we talked about adding some weight to it? So let's go ahead and add some weight to it. I'm going to start right here. I'm just going to add a little bit of weight right there in that little corner. A little weight right here, a little bit over there. So I'm just going to where the corners are. It's almost like you're rounding them off. So I'm just going to keep on moving through. So I'm just going where it starts. So right here, over here, right there, and there, there, and there. I'm going to move on. So we're just looking for those little corners. So just nice rounded edges. Turning, coming in, and just rounding it off. So a nice version of Betweed here. Go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine, and when we come back, we're going to start to work out here. All right, so this next tangle is going to be a variation on another tangle, and the tangle is called bromeli and let's see here it is by Patricia Aragon and basically how this tangle works is it's a lot of layering in here so what we're going to do is we're going to start with that flux like shape that we started with earlier that's the teardrop shape and we're going to do a soft aura around it but it's going to attach at the bottom Now we're going to do almost something that looks like a daisy chain off of it. We're just going to create more layers of it and it's going to start to look like a lotus. So what this is going to look like is I'm going to come in right over here. I'm going to lift up my pen and come out the other side and I'm going to create one of those teardrop shapes again. Now once I have that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that aura that comes up and over and it connects. I'm going to go over here and do the same thing where I'm going to create that teardrop shape that comes out the other side and then connects at the bottom and then I'm going to do that aura that goes up and over around and connects at the bottom. See how that looks like a nice lily? I think that just looks so beautiful. So we're going to do that inside of our tangle. So we're going to come in right in here down at the bottom and I'm going to start by creating that teardrop shape. Now you'll notice that my teardrop shape is actually going to have a little bit of an opening to it. So I'm going to come up off the side here come up and create that teardrop shape. Now notice that I'm going to leave a little bit of space between me and the edge here of the square that's above it. So I'll come back and down and that's going to create that little teardrop shape. See how that happened? Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to do the aura. So I'm just going to go ahead and create that aura. Now I can touch and come down. I'm going to come in right over here. I'm going to arc up and over, connect to the side, and then I'm going to go ahead and create that aura. And then I'll do it over here. So I'm just going to come up and over, touch, up and over, and touch. So you can see it has that really nice lily shape, that interwoven lily shape. I'm going to go over to the next one. I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to come up from the bottom, leave some space for the aura, coming out to the other side. Oops, I forgot to do my aura. Hmm. Now I'll come out the other side, do my aura. coming out the other side. And once
once again, moving to the next one right here, creating that nice teardrop shape. Leave some space between you and the square. Go ahead and aura. Takes a minute to get into the groove. Coming over, aura. Coming up and over, aura. By the time we're all done with this, I'll be really good at it. <laughs> and then once again, coming in, creating that teardrop shape, leave some space for the aura. Coming over to the side, aura. Coming over to this side, aura. So you can see now that we've got these really fun lily-like shapes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some weight into the tips. So you can see that I'm just going to come in and round off. and round off. I'll go to the next one and do the same, just rounding off the tip. And mine aren't perfect. Here we go. Rounding off, rounding off, and rounding off. And last one right here. So that now when I zoom out, that has a really nice weight to it and it has a nice correlation to everything that we've done so far. So go ahead and do yours and then when we come back, it's dragonfly time, baby. All right, so I'm going to turn my piece on its side here and I, you know, want to just state that a lot of the time people get into their heads about when they're drawing something. So I don't want you to think about drawing something as much as we're just making shapes just like we've done all the way through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start really just like we've been doing. I'm going to come right into the center here and I'm just going to make a little dot. And let's zoom right in on that so it's really clear. So we're going to start with that same shape that we've been doing this whole time, which is the flux. So I've got this nice teardrop shape that's going to come right there. Okay, so I'm going to go around to each of these triangles, come right to the center, and you can see I've got my pencil in my hand, so if you're feeling a little bit nervous about this, you can start with your, your pencil. It's like a dress rehearsal. And so we're just drawing a teardrop shape. Okay? Now once I've got that teardrop shape, I'm going to come in right on top and I'm going to create a little hat. And that's going to be on top of the teardrop shape. So just a little hat, a nice little beret, if you will. And some of them will be closer and some of them will be, you know, smaller. It doesn't matter. All dragonflies don't look exactly the same either. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down underneath here and I'm going to start to create this kind of stacked rectangle feel that's going to come down right underneath and you'll notice that that bottom one's going to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to do it again right here. So I'm going to create this kind of stacked rectangle shape. This one will be a little bit smaller and then this one will get nice and long. I'm going to do it again stacked rectangle right here. Here comes the smaller one and here comes the long one. One more time for good luck. Nice stacked rectangle and then a little bit longer and then a little bit longer. So once we have this 
You've got the shape of the dragonfly in here all ready to go. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to build a wing. And the wing is really just a V. So I just want you to think of it as a V or an arc coming off. So what this is going to look like is I'm just going to come up and touch that triangle up at the top. And then down below right here, I'm going to come in and I'm going to create another one that touches the side. I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to come up and touch. And then I'm going to go over to the side. So let's go ahead and we're going to do that all the way around. And you can see mine are wonky. They're not the same. It's all right. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start by coming in right at the body of the dragonfly here, creating a little arc and touching, creating a little arc and touching, and then coming down over here and touching, down over here and touching. Okay? Easy peasy. Up over here and touch, up over here and touch, down over here and down over here. One more time. There we go. Up and touch, down and touch, up and then down. So now once you have that, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to make it smaller this time. So I'm just going to come right back into where the wing is and I'm just going to go down and then I'm going to come over here and do another one going down. Same thing here and over here. Turning, starting at the wing, up and over, up and over. Here we are, up and over, up and over. Last one for good luck. And then when I zoom out, you can see that there's the beginnings of my dragonflies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by picking up my micron pen. Now for me, when I look at this, I'm noticing that the body of the dragonfly feels a little small to me. So, you know, what I love about a dress rehearsal is you can change your mind if you want to. So I think I'm going to make that teardrop just a little bit longer. So I'm just going to come down here and make it a little longer. And then I'll start to ink the rest of it in. I'm going to come up and give him his hat. And then once again, starting to create the wing in here. See? A dragonfly is not so hard, is it? All right, so I'm going to go around and do one more. You can see that I'm just going to extend the body of that dragonfly just a little bit. And you can see that I'm just starting to ink it in. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to keep on going with mine. Make him a little bit longer too. Just a little too teensy weensy with the body of the dragonfly there. Just 
taking my time, working with the lines, and inking it in. All right, you finish up yours, I'm gonna finish up mine. I'll see you in a minute. So you can see that I've got my dragonflies all set and ready to go, but we're gonna add one extra element into this piece just to make it extra zentangly. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this dragonfly on his side here and I'm going to create a V that's going to come down from this corner right here and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and start to come up and out and down and in. See how that looks like a V right there? I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So there's that corner right there. I'm going to go up and out, and up and out. And you can see that it creates a little V-like pattern right there. Now once I've got that V pattern in there, I'm going to start to add a tangle called Perf into it. And Perf just looks like kind of like a tic-tac, if you've ever had a tic-tac. And they're attached to each other. So that's Perf. P-E-R-F. And what I love about this is that, you know, you get these kind of little interstices in here that you can puddle in, and it just looks so neat inside that dragonfly wing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create perf over here too. And you can see that I'm going to try to let that go as far down there as I can. And then once again, looking for those interstices. And it just looks really, really nice. Now you can even try to get some in over here as well. So I might come in here and just divide this like that and this like this. And then I'll come in and I'll add perf. Now what I love about this is that once we've got this going all the way around, it creates what we call a meta tangle, where it gives a really interesting pattern on the outside of the piece here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one more time for you guys so that you can see. So once again, I'm coming up to the corner right here, and I'm just going to create a V that looks like it's coming right out of that corner. And I'll do the same thing over here. And then we're going to put in the perf. Right? So just little tic tacs. And the same thing over here. And you can see that I like to start by creating large ones first. and then working my way down. And you can come in here and add that V-like shape in here. And then once again, adding those Tic Tacs. And you can already see that really fun pattern is starting to emerge there. Super fun. All right, go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. You can see I've got two more to go, and then we're going to add a little bit of puddling in a minute. All right, so let's give these dragonflies a little bit more animation, right? So we're going to come in to this dragonfly right here, and I'm going to come up to the head. Now, some of you may decide that you want to do two eyes. I'm actually just creating a little bit of sheen because, you know, when you look at a dragonfly, unless you're looking super close at it, you just see the shimmer on its head. So I'm just going to come in and just do a little one, but you could actually do two eyes if you wanted to do two eyes. See how that easy that is if you wanted to do two? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm just going to puddle in one side because I, I like it to just look like a shimmer, but you might decide you want it to be eyes. And it looks a little something like that. So I'll go to the next one and do the same. It's just a little crescent moon there. And then I'll puddle it in.
You can see I'm just going around and doing my thing. Super easy and super fun so that now it really starts to have the feel of a dragonfly and that black has a nice relationship with what the center is and also all this weight that we put all throughout. All right, so you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to do mine, and then when we come back, we're going to add some color. So there's a pond that's really close to my house, and we love to go walking with the dogs out there, and they have these beautiful orange dragonflies out there. So I'm going to do kind of an homage to the dragonflies that are near to my house. Now, remember, if you don't have the same colors as me, don't worry about it. You can just use something that's similar and you'll be just fine. Uh, I'm really enjoying working with a tangle called Goldenrod, which is PC1034. It has a really nice earth tone to it. So we're going to be starting with that. And then I also have another really nice color here. This is uh, what looks to be PC1034. Three, three. And this is mineral orange. I love this color. It's just such a gorgeous color and these two together are really fantastic. So what I'm really looking for is kind of a mustard brown and an orange or if you want you could use Spanish orange in lieu of this one or you could use sunburst yellow. That's always a good one. So you know you can pick up the colors that are similar to what I'm working on or you can do your own thing completely. I'm all about people going going off the rails. So let's zoom in on the dragonfly here. And I'm going to start by working inside of his body for a moment. And you'll notice I'm using the lighter color first. This is goldenrod that I'm working with. And I'm doing just a really soft dusting of color right here. Now remember, for those of you who have never done any kind of color before, each color pencil is three different colors. You have your light, you have your medium, and you have your dark. It's all about the amount of pressure that you're putting on the pencil. And then if you need to, you can always pick up a color that is close in its combination to give a little bit more depth if you need to. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by dusting in on the body here a little bit. And then I'm going to go right down the side of his tail here. You'll notice that I'm leaving white on the side right in here and that's going to give this a little bit of a shimmer. I'm going to do the same thing right in here going very very lightly on the wings and you'll notice that I'm leaving a band of white right down the center of the wings. See how I'm leaving a little bit of white there? That's going to make it really interesting to look at later on once we've got our shading in. So I'm going to come over to the other side and do just that. And turning the tile to make it work for my hand here. Now you want to make sure that your pencils are really well sharpened up because whenever you're working in a small space like this you want to have nice sharp pencils. So I'm going to come in with my sharpened pencil and I'm going to just give a little bit of that really nice dark orange right on the edge. And I'm going to do the same thing in here, just a dusting of that orange right on the edge. Now you'll notice I don't have to press too hard that it shows up really, really fast. I'm going to come in right over here and add a little bit in here. Getting a nice dusting. Over here. Well, it gets a really nice kind of shimmer to this. Now, for those of you who have taken class with me before, you know that I love to blend my colors. Now there's two ways that we can go about blending this. 
One way is we can pick up our white from our Prismacolor pencil set. This is PC938 and you want to make sure that your Prismacolor pencil is all cleaned up so there's no other colors on it and you also want to make sure that the tip is nice and sharp. You can see that I'm pretty well sharpened up here. I'm going to come in right where that darker color meets the lighter color and I'm just going to blur out the edge a little bit. You can see that that softens it up and gives it a really nice transition. So you can see I'm going to go ahead and do that right down there and right down there. Now, let's just say that you wanted to have a little bit more intensity in your color. You can pick up a complementary color, that means it's in the same hue or the same family, and that lighter color, because it's so waxy, it will add a nice blend to it. Now I've picked up uh, what looks to be Canary Yellow, which is PC116, and I'm just going to come in right where the Goldenrod and the um, Mineral Orange are meeting, and I'm just going to run this over the top of it, and you'll see the difference between the two and you can decide which one you like. But you can see that just by offering up something that has a little bit of a lighter color to it, it gives it a little bit more electricity, doesn't it? Now you could do that way, or you could come back in with a little bit of your white and just run that over the top of it as well. So it's really up to you how you want to do your blending, okay? So with that said, I'm going to go around and I'm going to start to add that blending all the way throughout that dragonfly. But you'll notice that I'm leaving the white. You want to make sure that you leave the white so that you have a little bit of a sheen to it. I think that looks really great. So I'm going to go all the way around and do my dragonflies. You go ahead and do yours, and then when we come back, we're going to start to work inside of Perf. Isn't that so fun? It has such a nice shimmer to it. I really think that's quite beautiful. So one of the things that I talk about a lot in my classes is carrying color. And what that means is you're taking a color from one part of the composition and you're drawing it into another part of the composition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to do some shading around this central piece in here. And we're going to do it mostly where the betweed is that we started with. You can see that in my hand I've got the lighter color. This is goldenrod again. And I'm going to start with goldenrod and I'm just going to give a little bit of a shadow coming off of that main triangle, or rather square that's in the center of the piece here. So you can see that I'm just giving a nice little soft shadow. I'm not going hard on that pencil, I'm going really nice and light. And I'm going to turn the tile and start to create a little bit more of that shadow. And this is going to give it a nice depth of field. So I'm turning. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this a little bit more pressure. So you can see that I'm pushing a little bit harder on that pencil. And I'm going to let this echo out about halfway through that first part of the shading. So you can see that this is going to give this almost a nice antique look. I love goldenrod as, a, as an antique kind of color. Just getting right in there. I'm going all the way around. Now once I've had a chance to go all the way around, I'm going to pick up that darker color. This is that mineral orange, and this is going to give it a little bit of a glow. I mean, it's already starting to get a nice glow on it, but as soon as I start to add 
a little bit of that mineral orange. Look at how beautiful that is. It just gives it that edge that I really love. Going all the way around, really creating that softness. Now once I've had a chance to do that, I'm going to carry the color one more time. And that color is going to go right into the center here. Now you want to make sure that you're all sharpened up, that you have a nice point on your pencil here. And let's zoom in on that center piece right here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to start to get into the center. And you'll notice that I'm leaving a band of light right here. I'm just going to go around turning my tile and playing with that. You can see that I'm going to start to press a little bit harder on that pencil here just to give a little depth on the edges. And then I'm going to come in with that darker color. This is that mineral orange again. I'm going to go in and really give that a little pop. Just like so. Now, with those echo pieces, we can do the same thing, but because those areas are so small, I'm really just going to add one color in there because you'll never be able to tell the differentiation unless you're really looking for it. So you can see that I'm just getting in there. Notice how sharp the pencil is. That really makes a big difference. Look at how pretty that is. Just, it has that glow to it now. Isn't that lovely? Now, if you want to go ahead and add a little bit of blending to this, let's go ahead and zoom in on that. You can see that my pencil, I've got my 938 in my hand here. You want to make sure that this is nice and clean. So I'm just going to go in and clean it and then I'm going to just blur my edges. Now because this is such a small space, you really want to be careful not to lose your light. Now that's a good metaphor for life anyway. Don't lose your light. So I'm going to come in right in here and add the same. So I'm just going to blur that out a little bit. And I'm just going to go all the way around and blur it out. And it really does give it a beautiful antique feel. So that when I zoom out, look at how pretty that is. I mean, even if we just left it at that, wouldn't that be so nice? I just love that. All right, you go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine, and then when we come back, we're going to start to work inside of the dragonfly wings. So one of my favorite color combinations is putting orange next to purple. It just has a really beautiful feeling, nice relationship between the two. So the Tangle Perf is right in here, these little tic-tac shapes here. And I'm going to start with some purple. And I've got in my hand lilac, which is PC956. And then I also have in my hand violet, which is PC932. Now don't worry if you don't have the same colors as me, but what we're looking for is kind of a, um, a lavender or a lilac or a, a violet or a purple. Um, if you wanted to uh, use the dahlia purple, you could use dahlia purple or process red is always beautiful. Magenta is always nice, so don't feel like you have to use the same. Let's go ahead and jump into where 
the dragonfly is here. And you're going to see that I'm going to come into this tangle right here and I'm just going to work with the lighter color first. This is the lilac and I'm going to just dust halfway through those Tic Tacs. Now once I've had a chance to go halfway through, I'm going to pick up the violet, this is the darker color now, and I'm going to add a little bit of that darker color right on the edge. Look at how that glows. Oof. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Now, remember the white pencil. Make sure that your white pencil is clean by wiping off the tip of it. And then we're going to come in right here and just start to blur out the edge and pull a little bit of that darker purple down. Isn't that so beautiful? It really has a nice feeling to it. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to go all the way around and do mine. And let me just show you the other side. So we're just going through and doing the tops here. So you can see I'm just coming in and shading the top of the Tic Tacs here. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit of that darker purple. So lovely. And give that a little bit more lilac in there so we don't lose it. And then I'll come in with some of that white. I just love the feel of that. You can also do the other ones in there as well. So I'm just going to come in and add a dusting in here. Now this is a lot smaller of a space so if you don't want to do both colors you don't have to. I'm going to add just a touch of it right on the edge. And then I'll go ahead and I'll come in and do a little blend up. And that's how I'm going to answer those those beautiful little pieces. So I'm going to go all the way around and do mine. You go ahead and do yours. We'll meet back here and we'll start to pull that color into other parts of the piece. I just love those two colors in concert with each other. They're so beautiful. Let's take that purple and start to add it into another part of the piece here. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. I'm going to pick up my lilac again. This is the lighter color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to weave it in between where that lotus flower is. And you can see that I'm going very, very lightly. And then I'm going to bring it into the rest of the triangle. You can see I'm going very, very lightly with this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to give this square that we have in here a little shadow just by pressing a little bit harder on that lilac. So I'm just pressing a little bit harder and creating a little bit of a shadow, not a ton. And then I'm going to come in with that darker purple and I'm going to give it a little bit of a shadow. Now I'm going to blend this out a little bit by picking up my white pencil. You want to make sure it's clean and I'm just going to blur my edges a little bit. You can see that I'm doing little circles with that white pencil. You can see I'm even blending it out a little bit in here as well, just getting that nice soft feeling all the way through where that lotus is. And you can see that it has that really soft feeling. Now one of the things that I like to do is something called wallpaper. Now wallpaper is where you tangle with the actual color that you're coloring with. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start to add some lines 
with my darker color. So you can see that I'm working with the violet here. And I'm just going to add these really soft lines coming through the piece. Now notice that when I come through, I'm going to bring those lines all the way down and really get that kind of feeling where it's going all the way through. So I'm going to go over to the other side and do the same where I'm just getting in there and adding those lines in. And you'll notice that they're a little bit lighter than the black lines and it gives it this really neat feel like this is on top of something else. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to do that in all of my triangles or where my lotuses are. Have fun and enjoy. So I love these two colors together really starting to come alive. I love the way that this whole thing looks. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to take that same color and we're going to start to bring it in towards the center. And I'm going to come in with that lavender or that lilac color. And you can see that I'm going really lightly with it. And I'm just going to dust each of the corners. And turning and going. Now once I have that, I'm going to take that darker color, let's zoom in on this here, and I'm going to start to bring some depth into the corners just by adding that darker color. You can see that I'm turning. And now I'm going to pick up that white color again and I'm going to start to blur out the edge. Super soft. I just love the way that that color blends out with the white. It just gives it that really nice kind of painterly quality to it, which I just love. So go ahead and finish up yours. When I go ahead and zoom out, you can see it brings a lot of dimension into the piece here. Have fun. Remember, relax your shoulders. Take a deep breath in. Let it go with a sigh and have fun. Alright, so you can see that what we have here are two very gemstone-like colors. And so we have this kind of amber and then we also have this amethyst color. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of keep in that same theme and I'm going to bring in some uh, aquamarine here. So I've got light aqua in my hand which is PC992 and then I have aquamarine in my hand which is PC905. And you can see that my, uh, my light aqua is nice and sharpened up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring this into the background of where that dragonfly is, almost as if he is flying over water. So I'm just dusting in the light aqua first, and you can see that I'm going very, very lightly with it. And I'm going to start to dip into those places where the wings are as well. I'm just working around. Now once I have that, I'm going to pick up that darker aqua. This is the aquamarine here, and I'm going to start to create another shadow once again right around where that square is. So you can see that I'm letting it come out a little bit and giving that a little bit of depth and pressure. I'm going to give a little shadow around the dragonfly wings in here and around the body. 
So it almost looks like that dragonfly is going to fly right off the page. I'll pick back up a little bit of that white that we've been working with. You want to make sure that your white is nice and clean here and you're going to go ahead and blur out your edges. And you can see that that brings this really nice shadow into the piece. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. And when we come back, we're going to add a little wallpaper. So I love the way that that blue makes the orange just pop right off the page. Doesn't that look so pretty? I just love the feeling of this. Very tranquil and very relaxing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into where the dragonflies are and we're going to add some more wallpaper to this. Remember wallpaper is the idea of tangling with the color that you're coloring with. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpen up the darker color. So this is the aquamarine and I'm just going to get that nice and sharp. Now once I have that I'm going to do the tangle printemps which is just a spiral. And so I'll start in right here and I'll start my spiral nice and small. The reason why I like to start with Pronton is usually it's one of those tangles that has a nice way of filling the space. So you can see that this is already starting to gain a little bit of texture which is nice. So you're going to see me start to come in again. And I'm only adding just a couple in here. I'm not going to make the whole space be filled. I might add one over here. And you can see that I'm going nice and slow with it. Isn't that so pretty just having that texture underneath the dragonfly? Let's do that again. So I'm going to come in and this time maybe I'll do it over here. I do like a little bit of randomness with the wallpaper. can see that I'm really taking my time. Maybe one over here. Get a little teeny tiny one in there. So each one can have its own variation on the theme here. So if you wanted to do, you know, a couple in a certain area or what have you. You just kind of play around and see what actually works for you. I put one in up here this time. It almost gives like a shadow like feeling to the water. So that when we zoom out more texture. It keeps it interesting. All right, so go ahead and do yours and then when we come back we're going to start to add that blue into where our lotus is. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom in on the lotus here. I'm going to pick up that light aqua and we're going to start to dust in the tip of where the lotus is and then right underneath where that crossover is. You can see there's the crossover in there and I'll do one more right here and then a little bit down there. Okay, so once you have that I'm going to come back in with some of the darker color and right at the point I'm going to give a little bit of embellishment. I'm going to make it a little bit deeper right around where that crossover is and down in here as well. So you can see it almost has a sheen to it. Now I'm going to take the white pencil and use that as a place to blend. Now I think I'm going to add just a touch more of that aquamarine right in here just to give that some interest. I'll pick up that white pencil and blur out the edges and you can see that that makes a bit of a difference there. It makes it interesting and the color isn't so abrupt. I think I can come up here and add a little bit as well. 
So instead of just shading it all one color, you're giving it a little bit of differentiation, which makes it more interesting to the eye. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that again. So we're going to pick up that light aqua. We'll bring that into the top of the lotus, the bottom here where the lotus is, a little bit down here. See where that crossover is right there? I'm going to bring a little bit right here so it creates a shadow. A little shadow here and a little shadow there. One up top and one right there. I'm going to pick up the darker color and give a little bit of depth. And right there as well. Picking up that white and blurring out the edge. Giving that a nice transition. And isn't that so beautiful? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do these two on my own. You go ahead and do yours. And then when we come back, we're going to do some finishing touches. Really love how this is coming together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on the center here. And I'm going to bring in just a touch of the light aqua. And you can see that I left a little bit of white in there. And then I'll take some of that aquamarine and just give that a little pop there so that it really brings your attention in. Now, around the outside edges, we have this really nice frame that we've been working with. So I'm just going to zoom this out here. So I've picked up my favorite gray. This is the uh, the 70% cool gray, this is 1065 from, uh, from Prisma. Let me see if I can get that to focus here. There you go, 1065, the 70% cool gray. And I like this color because it mimics graphite. What I struggle with as a left-handed person is that I end up wearing graphite on the side of my hand, and I, I don't care for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with this nice gray and I'm going to start to dust in the points with a really, really light touch. Now you'll notice that I'm going to leave a little bit of white in the middle of each band. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So I'm just going to dust that in. And then I'm going to go with a heavier hand right in the point. Now once I've got that, I can pick up that white pencil and start to blur out my edges. So I'm going where the lighter gray is meeting the darker gray and giving that a little bit of a blur out. And you can see that that gives a kind of a metallic feel. I'm going to do the same thing in this outer edge as well. So you can see that I'm just going to come up and out. Up and out. And up in here. Now what I love about this piece is that there's the square that's in the, um, the inside here that's creating a little bit of a shadow in here. So I'm going to give that a point. And that's something I didn't have in the original piece. That was a, a nice oopsertunity there. Now I'll go into the points and start to give this some extra pressure. And 
and then I'll come back in with that white. Make sure that the white is clean so that you're not dragging purple into your gray. Not that that wouldn't be nice, but for the purposes of what we're doing today. And then I'm just going to get right into where it's creating a shadow. Super fun. Oop, I missed a shadow. There's always one that gets away. Maybe that's the dyslexic in me. I don't know. All right, so that when I zoom out, look at how that gives it a much more finished feel, which I think is quite lovely. So we're going to pick up the white pen for the next part of our section here. So go ahead and finish up what you're working on, and then when we come back, we'll be adding some white elements. Okay, so I'm picking up my gel white pen, and if you have the Sakura white or the Uniball, uh, all of those are great pens. So if you have the Signo Uniball or if you have the Sakura white jelly roll, these are both really great to use as um, your highlighter. You can see that I've got another one. This is the Jelly Roll 10. You can use either one of those. I have found a new company. They're called Mizu Love and um, it's M -I, uh, I, I believe it's M-I-Z-U and then L-O-V-E and you can get them on Amazon. They're really wonderful and they work quite well but you know me I always start them off on my finger first and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to add some dots into the piece here just to add a little bit of interest. So I've got these in my corners here and then inside of my dragonflies I'm going to add a little sheen right in the darkest part and you can even add a little lightness inside of the body just to give it uh, some texture which I love. Uh, inside of the wonderful perf that we had here you can add a little bit of dots in the darkest part. And I always think that that tends to give it a little bit of dimension which is great. And then if there's some spots in the center that you'd like to do, like you could even add some dots into your center pieces. I always think that that looks nice and soft and pretty. You don't have to go hog wild with this on, on this particular piece. You can just do a couple of white dots and it really makes a huge difference. One thing I am going to do though is I am going to pick up my black pen here for a moment and let's zoom out just for a minute. I think what I want to do is I'm going to add a little black dot into each corner of my outer square here so that once I've done that I can go back in and add a little bit of white right over the top of it. So I've got this kind of rivet and then I can add a little bit of white right over the top of it just to make it pop. You can make your, your black dots a little bit bigger than mine. Mine were a little bit small, but that's fine too. So that's really all I'm going to do with the white. So I'm going to go around and start to add the white into all those little areas that we just talked about. And then when we come back, we're going to add just a little bit of color into the outside edge. So I always love it when color looks like it's emanating out of the piece or seeping out of the piece here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of that purple that we have here and I'm going to just start to dust the border with it and I'll show you what I mean. So you can see that my pencil is really nice and sharp here and I'm going to use the side of the pencil and just start to 
add a little bit of color kind of seeping out from the piece. Now you'll notice that I'm not being particularly even with it. In fact, I want it to look almost like watercolor. You know how watercolor bleeds out of, uh, out of a piece? That's kind of what I'm going for is a little bit of this kind of watercolor feeling. So I'm just going to get right in there and start to work on those outer edges and I'm being uneven about it like I said before. Now once I've had a chance to go around and I'm just going to do halfway for the effect of the video here. So you can see that I've done it here and there. I'm going to go ahead and pick up my violet now. This is the darker of the two purples and I'm going to start to dust a little shadow around the edges. And you can see that I don't have to press too hard to make that violet start to show up. I'm just working in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to press a little bit harder now to create that kind of glow that I always like to look for. And then you can come in with your white pencil and start to just blur out the edges. And I just love the way that that looks when it's emanating, emanating out of a piece. That word emanating is sometimes hard to say. But I love the glow that that gets. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. Have fun. Play. Enjoy. So I love this. I think this came out really well. I'm going to go ahead and put my chop in here. Your chop is just your signature um, or your uh, initial. And so I think I'm just going to put my chop right down here at the bottom. I like to hide it inside of the piece here. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide it right in this little corner. It doesn't want to go. My pen is giving me a little bit of a tough time, but we can get that in there. So it's nice and hidden. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the other piece in here. And what I want to say about this is, you know, when you come back in and you try different colors with the same piece, you really do see different things and you get a different feeling from it. So I really hope that you'll come back and try the piece with different colors or different tangles, whatever is working for you. If you enjoyed the class today, please go ahead and give us a thumbs up or leave us a nice review. I'd really appreciate it. And um, even better, you could go ahead and subscribe to our Tangled Yogi page here on YouTube. And that will help people to find us and do Zentangle with Color. And if you're wanting to join us on Facebook, I am at the Tangled Yogi Art Community page on Facebook. We have lots of students there that share their work and we learn so much from each other because everybody does it a little bit differently. I'm also on Instagram and you'll see the ideas start to come to life for classes that I do on YouTube and that show up on my Tangled Yogi website as well. So that's it for me. I'm Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi. I hope you had a good time with me today, and I look forward to seeing your work sometime soon. Bye for now.